Okay, really quick. Which of these two sides do you think performs better? Are you sure? Would you bet 20,000? Because you know, you're already kind of doing that when making decisions like this. And in fact, if you just randomly implement new changes without testing them, your conversion rate over time might look something like this. Where in a perfect world, we would just be able to scratch the changes that didn't work and then end up with a net positive trajectory. So let's find out how enterprise brands avoid these costly mistakes and how they use A-B split tests to make the most of their website traffic. All right, so here's how this video is gonna work. First, we will go over who should be running A-B split tests in the first place, like how much revenue should you be making and exactly how much website traffic is needed in order to get meaningful results. Then we can take a look at the most common mistakes that people make when running A-B split tests. And lastly, I will give you a super simple framework for designing your own experiments effectively. So diving in heads first, I think it's important to understand that conversion rate optimization is a pure numbers game. And that means if a store makes like 100,000 per year in revenue, a 5% uplift would mean an extra 5,000 per year. Not bad, but if another brand makes like 10 million in revenue, the same 5% would already be an extra 500,000 per year, which is a lot more interesting. So as a first rule of thumb, we can say the more revenue a store currently makes, the better, because we will see higher returns on potentially the same efforts. Beyond that, it's also important to understand that conversion rate optimization is not exactly cheap. So if you want to work with established agencies, you can definitely expect rates anywhere from three to 15,000 per month. And that means working with them really only makes sense if the expected uplift covers for the costs and also leaves you with some profits because obviously you want to see a return on that investment and good agencies would also tell you about that upfront. And just from what I've seen personally, I think you should be making north a quarter million per month in revenue. And if you need help finding a reliable agency, there's going to be a type form in the description. Uh, you can answer a few questions and then I will try to make a recommendation based on your current stats. Okay, now moving on. Aside from revenue, you also need a substantial amount of traffic coming to your website. And if you want to be extremely confident, you need 240,292 visitors just for conducting one single experiment. And this is where some people mess up. Let me explain. So let's imagine I had these two coins right here and I would flip both of them 10 times. Then it might happen that this shows heads five times and this shows heads eight times. Now I could say, wow, this coin is so amazing. It performed 60% better than this one. Except that we all know it's probably not true. Intuitively, we all know it must have been luck. But that's exactly what people do when they run split tests with too little traffic. 10 people to this website, 10 people to this website. Can't be very meaningful, right? And I don't want to touch on that for too long, but that actually creates a very interesting mathematical problem because after telling you about my awesome coin experiment, I'm sure we're all a bit more skeptical now. And with every experiment from now on, we should be asking, wait, how likely is it that these results are actually true and not just created by chance? Or in other words, we could say, how confident can we really be in our test results? Or we could also flip the question around and ask, wait, how many times do we actually have to repeat this? Or how many people do we need before we can be confident in our results? And I mean, just take a moment to realize how fundamental this question really is. I mean, coin flips, all right. AB split tests, awesome. But how about different medicines? Which one is more effective? Suddenly we might be looking at a life or death question. You know, sometimes I just wish more people would be interested in math. <laughs> Anyways, I will give you the answer now. So the two things that make us more confident in an experiment are A, the sample size. If I did this experiment a million times and then this shows heads 500,000 times, this 800,000 times. Yeah, now you would believe me more that this is actually true. And the second thing that makes us more confident is the magnitude of difference. So if this never showed heads and then this maybe 20 times in a row, it could still be luck. But at that point, it's also more likely to be actually true. And the exact math behind that is a bit complicated. So I would recommend just using one of these online calculators. And let's say your current conversion rate is 5% and you want to be able to detect another 5% uplift. So that means in total 5.25. Then you would need 120,000 visitors per website variant. 
And that's how I calculated the 240,000 that I mentioned in the beginning. There are also some fast forward methods that take historical data into consideration. And then you would only need 84,000 visitors according to this website right here. So now in summary, who should be running AB split tests? If you ask me, you should be making at least a quarter million per month in revenue. And then website traffic should be around or above 200,000 visitors per month in order to get meaningful test results. Okay, so now that we know who should be running AB split tests to begin with, what else could possibly go wrong, right? <laughs> a lot. And as promised, here are some of the common mistakes that people make. This is actually not coming from me, this is coming from Stuart Frisbee, who was director of design at booking.com. So I think he's as legit as it gets. And here's what he had to say. So the first mistake is running tests with too little traffic. And we've covered that in great detail, so let's just skip to the second. Second would then be the test duration. And Google recommends running tests for at least two weeks, even if you have enough traffic, because then you will have a more well-rounded set of data. For example, you will have weekdays, weekends, maybe a news article coming out. Maybe the weather was super good for a few days and consumer behavior shifted a bit. Um, so you definitely wanna average these things out. That's why they recommend two weeks. A third common mistake is then changing too much at once. So for example, if you change an entire landing page or 10 different elements at the same time, you won't be able to ascribe the change in conversion rate to one specific change. So you can't really draw specific learnings from that. But that would be very important because with every experiment, you should get a bit smarter every time and also make future experiments more reliable. So that's why it's actually very important to draw specific learnings from experiments. And what's recommended instead is minor incremental changes because then you know exactly which change had which effect. The last common mistake is then assumed reproducibility. I have to go a bit slower on this one, <laughs> but it's pretty important. And it means that just because an A-B test worked for another site, it doesn't necessarily have to work for your site as well. And here I will use the example of an Instagram story-like collection filter. If the majority of your traffic comes from social media platforms, you could make the case that they will know how to use this kind of UX, they're pretty used to it, and it might help to navigate the website faster. But if on the other hand, your audience is completely foreign to these social media platforms, maybe not even active on Instagram, then this element might rather confuse them or throw them off a bit, and it might even perform less good or worse than the original website. And that's why it's so important to repeat tests for yourself, make data-driven and informed decisions. And it's also important to prioritize your experiments because you can only run so many at once and they have to run for a certain while. So maybe you wanna take your customer avatar into consideration or you can take, take a look at some Google Analytics data. And good agencies will also help you with the data analysis part and then propose experiments based on that or prioritize them in that order. And yeah, as I said, if you need help finding a good one, type form in the description. All right, then lastly, a quick framework for designing experiments effectively. And this is something I learned from the leading CRO agency here in Germany, the Drip Agency. You can also get you in touch with them. And they always say it's important or it's useful if you can answer the following three sentences. So if we do X, then Y happens because of Z. So this is how you, how you articulate the test hypothesis. And let me also show you this with an example. So let's look at this one right here. If we make all primary call to actions look consistent, then the conversion rate will increase because the user is subconsciously guided to the next step. And that's the context dependent memory effect. And I can't recall the exact numbers, but I remember the test went crazy well for this client. And yeah, that goes to show how we can use that framework to design your own experiments. So yeah, that's it for this quick intro. I really hope you learned something new and you had fun watching. And if you have specific questions, leave them in the comment section. And if you rather want to consult with an expert right away, type form. And beyond that, just have an amazing rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.